Welcome back to Midday. We're down at the Kamloops Art Gallery on this sunny afternoon, and we're talking with the curator here, Cheryl Neville. It's great to have you back on the show. Great to be back. Yeah. A couple of great exhibits we're talking about today. One of them with a very local connection. He lives in Westside. His name is Ted Smith, and he's actually a graduate of, uh, I believe it's Cam High in 1951, and he has been painting for decades and is still painting, but a, a huge exhibit here sh showcasing many of the decades of his work, Chero. That's right. He's actually 81 now and still painting. Um, and this is a retrospective. It's essentially his life's work. Um, so it's uh, paintings that start in the 1960s and go until 2014. Uh, Ted Smith has a very interesting history in that his start in life in terms of an occupation had nothing to do with artistry at all. Yeah, it's true. He worked as a young man on CN Rail, and, uh, but he had been always someone who would draw and paint, I think. There was always a creative aspect to his life, but uh, there was a point when he, in his mid-twenties, wasn't quite sure what to do with his life because uh, they were phasing in uh, new technologies, taking out old technologies, and he didn't really have a place uh, at the CN Rail that he could see long term anymore. And um, so he, he got some advice from a psychologist, a counselor who actually said, you know, you're, you're well suited to either be a bookkeeper or an artist. <laughs> It doesn't usually work out that well with those psychologists. No. Good for him. I know. And so then he enrolled at the Vancouver School of Art, and uh, that's uh, the Emily Carr University of Art and Design now. And those were the most formative years for him, between 1960 and 64. So the exhibitions that are on view, there's actually two. The other one is Jack Shadbolt, Seven Decades of Works on Paper. And we wanted to include his drawings as well because he was one of his teachers at the Vancouver mm -hmm. School of Art. So primarily speaking, where did Ted draw his inspiration? Because the first few pictures I saw here are of Stump Lake and, and regional areas and uh, mm -hmm. nature scenes that are very close to where we are. Very much, yeah. Most people will be able to, who live in Kamloops, will identify these sites for sure. When he was finished school, he came back to Kamloops and he's been living here ever since. And he's been painting the landscape. And he goes between uh, very realistic, uh, representational landscape paintings and abstract. And he just kind of flows between both styles. Where did he um, start becoming uh, noticed and, and regarded as an up-and-coming artist, do you know? Probably in the 1980s, the Oasis Gallery was actually just across the street from the current art gallery here, and uh, so they represented his work, and then people really started to purchase it, and his paintings are in homes across Kamloops. Which is another interesting point. You were mentioning to me that many of the pieces of this exhibit are no longer Ted's because somebody has purchased them, but That's you right. have a line on all of the people in town, or a lot of people that own a piece of his work. Thanks to his bookkeeping nature, he's collected um, these binders that he's photographed every work that he's ever made and so he has this collection of, of really detailed information that is basically uh, an image of the painting and where it ended up and so I was able then to follow those threads and to go into people's homes and take their treasured paintings off their walls and bring them into the gallery. Did anybody have a problem doing that? Not at all. That's very People cool. were so gracious. That's yeah. really neat. Let's talk a little bit about the other artist, the one that was his teacher, Jack Shadbolt. Um, does he, is he a BC uh, artist or is he from somewhere else in the country? He's considered a British Columbia artist. Uh, he passed away in 1998 and uh, he is really known as one of the most prominent um, painters in Canada, and specifically BC. Because of the time that he was at the Vancouver School of Art, he really had a strong influence. So his in, uh, ability to instruct other artists and um, mentor them in a lot of ways was really, had a huge impact. And many of his pieces here at this exhibit are sketches, is that right? Yeah, this is an incredible collection that we had donated from the Simon Fraser University Art Gallery. And so there, we received 79 works on paper, and this is a selection from that donation. And it really spans from 1930 until the late 90s when he passed away. And so it shows early work when he was um, in just after the war. Uh, he was in the administration for Canadian War Artists. And um, 
And then there's some prints that go right up to when he became um, more interested in surrealist imagery, and um, it's it's incredible. You see a lot of working drawings actually that he made to um, towards big, large scale murals and big paintings. So there are literally thousands of hours of work represented on these walls. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. It's good to know that. Also, how long does this exhibit run so people know? Until August 30th. Fantastic. Anything else that you would like to add today, Cheryl? Uh, you know, we also made an incredible catalog, so I encourage people to go to the gallery store. And um, so it's, it's the Ted Smith, the ultimate coffee book of Ted Smith's work. Very nice. It's yeah. always nice to have somebody so intensely local and have their work represented right here in town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Uh, as we mentioned, this is running through until the end of August. So people have lots of time to come down and check out the work. It's absolutely beautiful. If you like scenes locally, you'll really enjoy this. It's also very cold and cool in here, thanks to the good AC. <laughs> so come and check it out. We're back with more Midday in Two Minutes. Stay with us.